Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and this is Traditional Woodworking with Hand Tools. In a previous episode, we made a very simple butt jointed box. And now, as promised, we're going one step further, we're going to make a rabbited box. So as we saw when we made the simple butt jointed box, you start off with your material and the first thing to do is to mark how you're going to cut the pieces to provide the sides and the front and the ends. Uh, and I've uh, chosen this piece to be number one or the front here. You can see how the grain will carry on. So this will be the side. This will be the back. And then going the other way, this will be the um, fourth side and this will be the third back. And then here's what will be the top and somewhere else is the bottom. So we covered that before, that how important it is to mark the pieces. So having marked the pieces with a rebated box, we don't want to see the bottom. So on each of these pieces, after we've cut them out, the first thing to do is to rebate where the sides go in like this and to rebate the bottom where the bottom will go in all the way around and you can see how that fits like that so what i'm going to demonstrate now is how we actually make these rebates we've talked about different kinds of rebate planes and today we're going to use two for the rebate at the side, I'm going to use an older wooden one. And part of the reason is that it has a skewed blade and it has a little nicker here. And those two things make it much more likely that I can make a smooth cut. So I've set the width here to be the width of the piece that's going to go in there. And I set the depth stop to be the depth. So I'm going to put this in the vise uh, and as an extra precaution I'm going to put another piece of scrap that's the same height behind it so that when I plane, whoops, this needs to be up a little bit more, there we go, make sure those are the same height, so that when I plane with this if, if this gets split out, uh, this will prevent most of the worst thing. And in any event, I'm uh, doing the cross cutting first so that then whatever, if anything bad happens here, it will get removed when I wrap it at the bottom. So here is our wooden adjustable plane. And if you come back, you'll see that the knicker blade here cuts a sharp line. And that's what helps make sure that the wood doesn't split out. So all we do is just keeping the plane firmly against the work and as upright as you can. We keep planing until both the depth stop rides on the wood and then we'll know that the rabbit is complete. Now at this point, there are hardly any shavings coming out, so I know that the depth stop is riding on the workpiece and I pretty much completed the end rabbit. Now the next part is to put the rabbit along the bottom. So making sure that I know which is the top and which is the bottom. This is the bottom side. I put the wood in and this time I'm going to use an alternative plane, which some of you might find a little easier to locate. And this is the modern record version of a plane that, of course, Stanley also made. Uh, and it doesn't have a skewed blade, so it's much more, it's much safer to use this for the length. But the same thing. And make sure that the fence, which is set to be the width of the bottom piece, is adjusted correctly. And I make sure that the depth is the same as the depth here. And holding the plane 
close to the wood I simply do this until the depth stops right on the wood. I can further see that because I'll be able to see when this is as low as this and this end is as low as this. And I'm pretty much there now. Maybe a couple more little strokes. And that probably a little more here is good enough. So having rabbited the front, the back, and the sides, and having cut the bottom to fit in the space, we're now going to assemble it. And I'm just going to nail this piece together. I'll just make sure with my fingers I can feel that everything is flush. Making sure that the bottom is flush. And I'll put a nail in here. Put one on the other side. The important thing that I'm doing here is with my finger, I'm feeling that the, what is the back, is actually flush with the sides. And one more over here, the same thing. So having assembled the front and the back, the sides and the bottom, it's now time to attach the top. So making sure by looking at the triangle that I see which is the front. This is the front of the box and this is the front of the top. We will put some hinges on the back. And I think it will look nice if we bevel the sides and the front. And if you remember from a previous episode, a bevel is where you make an angle that's the same distance in from the top surface as it is from the bottom surface. So I've simply used my fingers to do this here, and I can do the same mark down here. Do that on the front and the sides, and then it's just a question of putting this in the vise and using a convenient plane. I have my jointer plane here, plane until I get down to those two lines. And there we have our finished rabbited box. So if you like that, stay tuned. Remember to hit the subscribe button and the next box we make will be even more complicated and we'll start getting into different kinds of dovetail boxes. So thanks for watching. Feel free to make comments and we will see you soon.